when will the Fed pivot and what will cause the Fed to pivot? We're going to be discussing inflation, the Federal Reserve, and where we go from here with my good friend, Steve Penny. He's a creator of Silver Chartist. It is the best free newsletter out there for gold, silver, mining stocks, and the best ways throughout these cyclical uh, historical time periods where you see debasement of currency and rising commodities, the best ways to play it to actually uh, grow your wealth, your purchasing power. So I'll link right there down below where you can check out Silver Chartist is the best free newsletter out there to make sense of what's happening and what to do with your money. So be sure to check that out. Smash the like button on this video. And special thanks to our sponsor, Visa Silver, one of our favorite silver and gold mining stocks. So thank you, Visa Silver. And Steve, how are you doing? Good, man. Uh, it's good to connect with you again. It's been a little bit too long. You too. What's going to happen uh, in, in, in the Fed's meeting at Jackson Hole? What are they saying behind the scenes? Well, if only I could be a fly on the wall and knew exactly what they're talking about. Uh, so Jackson Hole, uh, Chairman Powell just spoke this morning. I think he struck a more hawkish tone than many were anticipating, uh, maybe including myself as well. But you know what they say and what they do are, are going to do are often two very different things. Remember, the, these are the same people who were saying inflation is transitory just a few months ago, and they can change what they're saying on a dime. So you know he, he's saying things like, you know, in, or we're going to fight inflation at all costs. I don't think that's the exact words he used, but that's the kind of message he was trying to convey. Well, are you, are you going to do that if the stock market's down 30 40% and real estate continues to decline and um, you know uh, interest rates continue to rise? Uh, and I think the answer to that is probably no. And that's the big next big catalyst for silver and gold. What will be the main catalyst you believe that would cause them to pivot? Is it uh, stock market staying the way it is and the effect on 401ks and 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 housing prices and most people's net worth is tied up in their house? Is it that and the political pressure from that? Or what is it? Well, it's, it's hard to predict what the exact catalyst is going to be. Um, it could be any of those things you said, or it could be something out of left field, kind of like a black swan event. But one thing I know is they're, the Fed is always reactive and not proactive, and they tend to wait until people are begging for it. They want that monetary, you know, heroin, so to speak. And you know, you'll see when you see free market capitalists, supposedly free market capitalists, and people on the right who you know rail against um, government intervention. Well, they're going when things get bad enough, they beg for it. They beg for the stimulus checks, just like they did back in March of 2020. So, you know, how long are they going to wait? I don't know, but I know that they, well, I have a high level of confidence that they're going to pivot. And, you know, history suggests that's what they always do. They always debase the currency. That's just what always happens. And uh, despite what they say, they're going to do. If you had their playbook, what are the main reasons they would pivot? Yeah, I think, you know, everyone wants to talk about boosting asset prices, you know, stocks, real estate, all these things, um, interest rates. And that's true. But here's, I think, the biggest reason they, they absolutely have to, and that's to fund government spending. We're running a trillion dollar plus deficits in perpetuity. Who is going to fund that those deficits, especially at artificially low interest rates? China is stepping back. Saudi Arabia is stepping back. You know, you've got all these big buyers stepping back and the Fed is always the buyer of last resort. Someone is going to have to fund those deficits. Otherwise, the alternative is we do actual austerity here, which I can all but guarantee that's not going to happen. You know, the, there's no way these politicians are going to tell grandma and grandpa, hey, sorry, you know, Social Security is going to be cut. Um, all these unfunded contingent liabilities, sorry, we can't afford it. Uh, so, you know, th they're going to uh, continue to debase, debase the currency. The Fed is going to step in and prop up um Markets and you know be the uh, buyer of last resort at these treasury auctions. There's a lot of talk about how this type of economic environment affects the younger generation, um, but you you mentioned a bit about grandma and grandpa and, and social security. Um, it, the ramifications of this also greatly affect um, older people, retirees, people on fixed income. Um, in many ways, right? Where right? you've got Social Security, then you've got 401ks. I mean, if that's down 40% and that's 98% of your wealth and every quarter you take a deduction so you have cash, mm -hmm. it does some damage. Not to mention 
If they don't have that, then maybe it's fixed income with a couple apartment units. I mean, maybe they have a, a fixed rate mortgage on them. Uh, it really does a lot of damage to the um, retirees and, and quote unquote seniors uh, as well, right? It does. Yeah. That's why one reason I get so passionate about this is what they're doing. You know, inflation transfers wealth from the lower middle classes to the upper class. And as far as why they're going to pivot, there was two more reasons I didn't mention. One is it transfers wealth. And the other is that you can't tax deflation. You know, the tax receipts go down in a deflationary environment. But as far as, you know, squeezing the lower middle class, yeah, I mean, the, the tip, the average person has very little margin in their budget. And, you know, if prices go up just a little bit, there's there can often not be enough money for you know the necessities in life, groceries, utility bills. Well, inflation drives asset prices higher, and who owns all the assets? You know, the top one percent, the people who are making these policies. So that's just another reason that they're going to continue to um, inflate. So, Inflation Reduction Act was passed. Um, we going to solve inflation with this one, or what? Well. It, if you believe the name, then yeah, sure. We don't have anything to worry about. But unfortunately, the name of these acts always has the exact opposite of the desired effect. How so? Well, uh, I mean, you can go back to anything. Like the, the Department of Energy was created to reduce oil prices. Well, what have oil prices done since then? The government did, went on the war on drugs. Well, what's happened with that? Drug use has spiraled out of control. The war on poverty, more people are poor than ever. Um, so whatever they do, you know, the Patriot Act is another one, most unpatriotic act act we've probably ever had. So it, it just always does have the uh, exact opposite of the n- effect that the name implies. But what is inflation? Inflation is an increase in the money supply. That is the definition of inflation. And government spending is inflationary. So that's what this act does. It increases government spending. And they say, oh, yeah, well, we're going to offset it with tax increases. Uh, that that math doesn't work. And, um, you know, and they also say, we're going to hire all these IRS agents with and give them guns. And they're going to go around <laughs> collecting, uh, you know, uh, people who are cheating on their taxes. And that's going to pay for these things. Uh, I highly doubt that. Where do you think we go from from here? I mean, is the solution that we need a million IRS agents? And we got to kick down doors and... Uh, and pay off our national debt, or where do we go from here? Um, it's the end of August. You are starting to see, you know, uh, the signs of this really um, hitting people. I was talking to my neighbor yesterday, owns a construction home building business, and and he was saying they're really starting to see slowdowns um, as well, which uh, and kind of gave me one of those faces, like. And so you are seeing that. So where do we go from here? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, in the short term, short term predictions are are really hard, but I'm highly confident as we've been saying for well over a year now, we think the trend is going to be inflationary with deflationary impulses along the way. So we're probably due for uh, just a sharp deflationary impulse where things really sell off sharp. And that would probably be a catalyst for the Fed to pivot. Um, But, you know, as far as changing and fixing the system, um, you know, unfortunately, I think we're kind of beyond that. You know, I try and focus on things that we can control. And that's, you know, preparing for, you know, uh, volatility and, you know, uh, kind of crisis really in in the markets, financial markets, and, you know, um, all all the things that we've talked about in the past. Um, But, you know, I think with silver and gold, we're probably much closer to a bottom than any kind of top. I mean, downside risk seems minimal relative to upside potential especially in silver. What is the catalyst for gold and silver to move higher? Well, I th- the, the obvious one is um, when the Fed pivots. Everyone knows that or even begins to pivot. And uh, people define pivot as a different thing. That can mean a lot of different things to different people. And to some people that means, well, when they go to full on money printing and quantitative easing and cutting it or cutting interest rates again, yeah, that's coming, but I wouldn't necessarily define that as a pivot. In other words, I don't think we have to wait that long. I think once they just reduce the pace of their interest rate hikes and start to signal that the, we're kind of over the hump and they're going to eventually start, um, you know, lowering rates again, I think that's would be the pivot to me because that's where they're pivoting the trend or the trajectory of their policy decisions. And, you know, I, I think, uh, decent, a good estimate for a time frame. it would be October, November, but you know, that, that 
that could be off by a, m- a month or two in either direction, or maybe even a, a three or four months. But I think that's somewhere around there is when that starts to happen. Do you think that there is enormous pressure from the Democrats on the Federal Reserve to reverse heading into um, midterms? I mean, if I was a Democrat um, who was running for reelection, um, I would not feel too good that you kind of uh, walked into this mess, um, which of course gets blamed on them, but let's, uh, and of course, from cutting oil leases and the, in the many things they've done, of course, it's exacerbated things, but of course, this is a long-term trend that far supersedes any one individual that is in office. But do you think there is enormous pressure coming from the Democratic Party on the Fed or no? Yeah, well, I, I do. So I, like you said, if, if I were <laughs> pulling the strings and I were running for re-election and I were in office as a Democrat, I would probably want to get it. My goal would be to get as inflation as low as I can. You know, asset prices suffer in the meantime and then kind of pivot into those elections so that asset prices maybe start to uh, rebound. And you can see so that way you can claim victory on inflation and the trend would be back up in assets. But that's pure speculation on my part. So let's end with um, what's a checklist of, of preparation for these chaotic and turbulent times? What is the uh, what's the what's the guidebook and, and some important things to keep in mind? Yeah, as we, we've talked about many times, you know, silver and gold, I think, is a key part of the plan, but it's not the panacea. It's not the all-encompassing solution. You know, trying to develop multiple streams of income is good. Being resilient, um, I, I think, um, you know, eliminating consumer debt, you're changing your lifestyle decisions to, you know, prioritize what really matters to you and your spending in alignment, put your spending in alignment with your values, um, things like that. Um, I think the the core, the key word is resilience. You know, I think uh We're going to need to be resilient for what's coming in the next few years. Beautiful. So give us an update on the silver chartist side. I know you guys did an app and you got all types of stuff going on. Um, And I know you guys have a great free report that um, a lot of people have found very valuable. So uh, what's to know? Yeah, we're working really hard. We did launch our new app, our new members area. It allows us to do live streams and send push notifications and real-time alerts. Um, We've got David Brady as a contributor, Jeff Clark as a contributor as well. And we've got some more things we're working on really hard behind the scenes, just continually trying to make it better and better to serve our members and our community. So uh, link is down below where you can check out the free Silver Chartist report and get a breakdown um, and help yourself gain some clarity on what's going on and where to go next. Steve, I want to thank you for joining. I want to thank you for listening today. I'll link the Silver Chartist website in the description and pinned to the comments right there down below. And uh, Steve, any final words? No, brother. Thanks. I uh, appreciate you inviting me back and look forward to talking again. I want to thank you for listening. Be sure to smash the like button, subscribe, bell notification, and we will see you next time.